Good morning, Wabash. Good morning. Today speaking at Pioneer Chapel is John Janak with his talk entitled Embrace the Unknown. And yes, this is my older brother. John Janak was born and raised in Zionsville, Indiana. While at Wabash, he was a brother of Beta Theta Pi, a Sphinx Club member, a Wabash Democracy and Public Discourse Fellow, and played on the golf team. John graduated from Wabash in 2019 as a rhetoric major and biology minor. Following graduation, he returned to Indianapolis and currently works for Spot Freight. John's fondest memory of Wabash was being able to attend college with his two brothers. He hopes to continue to blaze a path for future little giants and hopes that he can that others can experience how special Wabash truly is. Please join me in welcoming John Janak. Good morning, Wabash. Now, it's only been about two years since I was here, but man, does it feel like it was yesterday. I never got a chance to speak up here as a student, so when Andrew and Josh asked me a few months back, I couldn't turn it down. Anyways, I want to thank the Sphinx Club and the Wabash community for giving me the opportunity to come speak with you today. To be honest, I've always felt like the people that the ones that gave chapel talks were some prestigious alumni talking about their life's accomplishments at Wabash or during their life, or well-accomplished professors discussing their field-leading research. Clearly, I'm not any of those. So, when they first asked me, I was like, absolutely, let's do it. But then I was like, well, what in the world am I gonna talk about? So I had to sit down and give it a lot of thought. But quickly, it dawned on me what I was gonna talk about and what Wabash needed to hear from me. I decided to break my talk up into eight parts. Part one, Evan's story. I'm sure you noticed the title of my talk em titled Embrace the Unknown. And I'm sure most of you were like, well, what in the world does John have up in his sleeve this time? My story starts like this. It was July 4th, 2018. I was spending the summer in Washington, D.C interning for Congressman Luke Messer, Wabash alum, and staying with Pledge Brother Evan Hansen as he was translating at a medical clinic outside the city. In classic DC fashion, it was a million degrees out. I mean, I swear you step outside drenched in sweat. I don't care who you were. Anyways, Evan woke me up early that morning and his classic, John, we've got a full day, no time for sleep. I threw on some clothes, ran downstairs, and he pretty much pushed me out the front door. Evan proceeded to take on a full sprint down the street. I had no idea what he had in mind, what his goal was. So I quickly lost him in the distance. At the time, I was actually in a walking boot, so I kind of just straggled behind. Like I said, I'd lost Evan in the distance. But quickly, I saw this figure running back towards me. He had two things in his hands. Yes, it was Evan. He was screaming, I got us something, I got us something. Well, Evan came back with two tie-dye I Heart DC shirts. Evan thought we'd lose each other in the city given the festivities that were gonna go on during the July 4th holiday. So he both wanted us to have matching shirts that way we wouldn't lose each other. Now, with our matching shirts, Evan and I got a cup of coffee and decided to walk towards the Capitol to see if they'd started setting up for fireworks. While walking towards the Capitol, Evan and I started talking about our future. Evan was planning on, on uh, pursuing a career in nursing. He was also a very strong student and was very passionate about science. So I knew any hospital or clinic would be happy to have him on board. For me, I was pretty unsure what life was gonna look like after Wabash. Was I gonna go to grad school? Was I gonna take a job? What kind of job was I gonna take? Where was I gonna live? Just a few of the questions that circled around in my head every day. I constantly found myself worrying about this next step. Evan finally stopped and looked at me and said this, you know what, John? You need to embrace the unknown. And I kinda just sat there dead in my tracks. I'm serious, Evan said. You can't go the rest of your life worrying about the next phase, the next step. Embrace the uncertainty that life throws at you. Part two, my guide to embracing the uncertainty. 
So much of today's society is like me. They are so worried about the future that they lose sight of what is right in front of them. Now I'm a firm believer in planning effectively. Just ask all my old professors. But you can't let it take over your life. Be prepared to go off script. Society is so accustomed to this bubble that they grow up in creating and shaping to what they feel like they should look like. That they finally establish this bubble and they're like, boom, I'm done. I've got everything I need in my life. I've got my family, hobbies, and close friend group. I don't need anything else. However, this is where you're wrong. Take a step outside your comfort zone. Take a class that seems rather challenging. Study abroad in a country for a semester. Join a club, play a sport, rush a fraternity, ask that special someone out on a date. Do something that forces you to embrace some sort of uncertainty. Now I wanna backtrack because I know I'd get some pushback from what I stated earlier. Someone might say, well, having a plan is good, John. Why be prepared to go off script when the plan you have in place is exactly what you're looking for? Now, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm not. But I do know living in the moment is pivotal in a person's life. Focus on the now and let everything pan out like it's supposed to. On the other hand, living in the moment forces you to ditch a lot of these plans that you may have had for quite some time. One person may see this as an issue. I see this as an opportunity. Seek this challenge. Use it as a chance to stretch yourself outside your comfort zone. Who knows what you might see on the other side. Part four, the COVID-19 outbreak. March 11th, 2020. I'll never forget this day. My mom, brother, and I were headed to Charleston, South Carolina for a long weekend. Right about this time, this is when the country went into full panic mode. This new sickness was all over the news. Most had no idea what it was, what it could do, and how long it was here to stay. Me being the foolish 23-year-old, it didn't really faze me at the time. I believe that the media was casting a spell on society, believing that we were undergoing the second coming of the bubonic plague. Fast forwarding to January 2021. Now we never got to the status of the bubonic plague, but my goodness has the sickness exceeded my expectations. It's nothing to play around with. COVID-19 has shook the world to its core. Loved ones have been lost, businesses are struggling, and stress is at an all time high for a large portion of the population. However, I wanna shift my focus from the hardships that the world is experiencing. The world has been forced to adopt this motto of embracing the unknown. This pandemic has caused the world to trust the process of modern medicine, practice the precautionary steps that have been encouraged by the world's leading doctors with the hope that life will be normalized sometime soon. More importantly, I wanna highlight the Wabash community. You guys just made it the whole last semester while the pandemic was running rampant all across the globe. To students and staff, it seems rather terribly minor. To people like me, I was flat out amazed. All across the United States, schools were completely virtual. Didn't even bother sending their students back into the classroom. In classic Wabash fashion, the uncertainty of the pandemic did not wither your efforts. Students went to class, followed the guidelines set in place by the college, while the staff amended their lessons so you all would still receive a world-class education. Ladies and gentlemen, that's remarkable in itself. Although you may not have realized it at the time, you were embracing the uncertainty without me even saying anything. The last thing I wanna say about the pandemic is take a step back. Picture yourself at the beginning of March 2020. Through all the pain and struggle, think about how, think about how much you've grown as a person. Yes. This pandemic has been absolutely brutal, but I guarantee that it has shaped you into a better, more well-rounded person that has the capabilities to pretty much tackle whatever life throws at you. That's all because you embrace the uncertainty. Part five, just say yes. Throughout college, I always found myself juggling a lot of things. I was going from class to practice to meals, back to class into the library. It never ended. Some days I remember, why did I sign up for all these things? Why am I doing this to myself? 
Looking back on it now, I just couldn't say no. I wanted to be that yes man that everyone was looking for. As I, and as I've said before, I don't have it all figured out. I still have a lot to learn. But there's one thing I can suggest to students from my time at Wabash is be that yes man. Learn to multitask. Be a leader on campus. Play a sport, good, good grades. You can do it all. It's possible. Because life's not going to slow down anytime soon once you graduate. Get the practice now so you can excel in the real world. Part six, failure. Anytime you hear the word failure, it's rather daunting. I get it. Now you've got me telling you that you need to embrace the unknown. Anytime you jump into something new, you've got a chance to sink or swim. What path are you going to choose? Are you gonna run away from your fears or are you gonna tackle them head on? I see this choice as an opportunity that you can't let go to waste. Sure, there might be some bumps and bruises along the way, but those bumps and bruises may lead to something life-changing. I'm tired of people using, the word, using failure as an excuse for something or someone. Bet on yourself. Use the tools that Wabash has taught you. Use that sense of failure as a motivating factor to, to succeed. Part seven, rise to the occasion. I've got a story I want to share with you guys. I think you'll enjoy it. It was Sunday, December 3rd, 2017. To me and to most, it was just a regular old Sunday. It was week 13 of the NFL season. The Philadelphia Eagles were squaring off against the Seattle Seahawks. Up to this point, Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz was playing at an MVP level, compiling nearly 3,000 yards passing and 33 touchdowns. Boom, just like that. Wentz takes a big hit at the end of the third quarter and it's not the same. Wentz comes to the sideline, hobbling, not able to put much weight on his right leg. The game ends and the Eagles lose. Wentz gets an MRI and the MRI indicates he has a torn ACL, a season ending injury. The Eagles sitting at 11-2 with three games left to play with high hopes to make a playoff run without their MVP caliber quarterback. The Eagles are now forced to turn to journeyman Nick Foles. A year prior, Nick Foles was strongly considering leaving football and starting a normal life. He was on his fourth team in four years, yet to secure a starting job. Now he was starting on the number one team in the division, hungry for a Super Bowl. The Eagles win their last three out of four games of the regular season. Foles starts to find his groove. Fast forward, February 4th, 2018, Nick Foles and the Eagles find themselves in a barn burner with the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 52. The Eagles win this game. Foles not only leads the Eagles to their first Super Bowl championship, but is also the name, the game's MVP. And just think, this man was a backup his entire career, a backup. And just like that, he rose to the occasion, made the most of the situation, embracing the uncertainty throughout the entirety of his career, but being rewarded with one of the most highly regarded honors in sports, all because he embraced the unknown that came with his career. Part eight, I don't have it all figured out. The final section of my talk. Sitting here at 24 years old, as I've made it clear, I don't have it all figured out. I still have a lot to learn. However, there is something more clear since I graduated. Promise me that once you graduate from this place that you won't let your fears, regrets, and concerns dictate the path you take in life. Turn those fears, regrets, and concerns as a driving force to make a difference in this world. Take those unknowns and turn them into motivators. I can tell you right now, the world needs more Wabash men. Wabash men lead, respond, and act in a manner that, do, that most do not bother with. I've only been in the workforce for two years and I'm astounded by the Wabash alumni. Nothing gets other colleges and universities, but there's something about Wabash men. A sense of comfort, leadership, and drive anytime they enter the room. Lastly, promise me that you will continue to embrace the unknown, and I'm sure this idea will take you to new levels you'd never imagined. Thank you, Wabash, for letting me come speak today. Good luck this semester and can continue to forward the Light Brigade to make this world a better place. Thank you.
Uh, one last announcement. Uh, the Sphinx Club has elected a new president to lead the campus and lead the chapel talks from now on. Um, so this was my, my last chapel talk, and I'm pretty happy that it was, I was able to introduce uh, one of my older brothers. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to welcome Andrew Gonzaro up to the stage. Uh, now, please rise and sing uh, Old Wabash. Da 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 da